Hi everyone, so today we're going to be going over how we can take uh, visuals or graphics or images and animate them in After Effects along a path of our own design. And to do that we're going to go over two examples today, one using leaves that look, make them sort of animate them to make them look like they've been caught in the wind, uh, and one using a bird graphic, that are both of which are downloadable for free from the nounproject.com. I'll put the links to the, in the description below. So I've already downloaded these, so the first thing I'm going to do is just come over to where I've saved the SVG file for the bird, and I'm just going to open that up in Illustrator. There we are. Zoom in a little bit. And the only reason I'm importing it into Illustrator initially is just because I want to be able to animate the wings separately from the main body of the bird. And so to do that, we just need to separate them into individual layers in Illustrator first. So to do that, it's quite simple. We just come over to the Layers panel, and we can see there's a group here for the bird. And if we expand this group out just here, zoom in so you can see what I'm doing, we can see that the wing is one path, and then the rest of the, in, of the layers that make up the rest of the bird are in their other groups. So I'll zoom back out. All I'm going to do is come up to these three dashes, hit New Layer, make a new layer called Wing, grab the path that represents the wing and drag that into its own layer, rename this second layer by double-clicking on it and typing Bird, hitting Enter. So that's the two separated out into their own individual layers. So it means we'll be able to animate the wing separately from the main body of the bird. We'll come up, File, Save As, and we'll just save this as an Illustrator file in here. So Illustrator, I've already saved this. Just click Save and so click Save to any other options that come up. We can also easily change the color of the graphic while we're in Illustrator by selecting both of these layers just here, coming over to our Swatches panel, which if you can't see that, come up to Window and come all the way down to Swatches and that should appear. Double clicking on the black fill icon and selecting whichever color you want. I'm just going to choose white for now. So it appears to disappear, but it's just because we changed it from black to white. And don't forget to resave to make the updates of the colors take effect. Now we're going to move across to After Effects. We're going to create a new project. We're going to create a new composition. It doesn't matter what, it, what you call it, that's fine. And we're setting it up as 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 25 and whatever seconds, 21 seconds will be perfectly fine for us and a background color of black. Hit OK. Then we're going to come up to Layer, New, Solid. We're just going to create a solid background color. Choose whatever you like from this selection, this here. I'm going to use this dark cyan color. Click OK and we'll see it appears in our composition. Now you just need to navigate to wherever you saved your Illustrator file after making all the modifications a second ago, and then just drag it and drop it into After Effects. When it imports, make sure the options for footage are selected and make sure that it's selected as merged layers. Click OK. Then we can drag that and just pop that into our composition pane above our deep cyan background color. Notice it's quite small at the moment, so if we just hit our S on our shortcut key for our scale options and scrub this to the right hand side, we see we can increase or decrease the scale. If it appears pixelated and you're wondering why on earth it appears pixelated when it's a vector graphic, just hit undo. Make sure this little star symbol here is selected and that enables it to continuously rasterize basically. So now if we rescale it, having got that option selected, we'll see that it maintains nice crisp lines. So I'm just going to pull that down again to the scale that I want it, maybe something around about there. Then I'm going to right click on it, come down to create and then select this option which is convert to layer comp. This then turns our Illustrator file to a composition file, and if we double click on this and open it up, just zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing, we'll see that we've got the wing separately from the bird as different layers. So I'm just going to grab these two layers from within the composition, hit Command C or Control C, and then Command V or Control V back in our other composition. Now we can delete the composition of the bird, and we've got our two Illustrator layers in the corner just here. So we can just select them both by holding Shift, hit V on the shortcut key to select the selection tool and move this around. Then if we hit our S for our scale keys, now we can adjust the scale of these two items. And if we need to, we can deselect and select the wing independently and just reposition it. Similarly, if we wanted the bird to be facing the other direction, we can highlight them both. We can right click, come down to transform and click flip horizontally. And that's facing the other direction. And then we can just select and reposition the wing if it's fallen out of place and deselect. So just make sure they're the scale we want them to be. I often like to lock the underlying layer, um, the solid layer, just so that it doesn't move when we try to select things. So now we can just highlight and select our graphic and then move it and reposition it to wherever we want it to be in the composition. Okay, so far so good. So the first thing I'm going to do is just animate the bird's wing to make it look like it's flapping. So this will be a very simple animation and we're just going to use the rotation options. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the wing itself and you'll notice this little crosshair in the center of the wing. So that's the anchor point. And so any rotation or animation goes from that anchor point. So to make sure that that anchor point is at the edge of the wing just here, and so that all the rotation occurs from the edge of the wing, not the center of the wing, we're going to need to change the location of that anchor point. So if we just come up to this tool up the top here, the pan behind tool, which is Y on the shortcut key, select that, and this will allow us to move this anchor point. 
So I'm just going to place that there, just on the very tip of the wing, and then hit V on the shortcut key so that we can click off and deselect. Now if we select our wing layer and hit R on the shortcut key, that opens up our rotation options, and we can see here that we can now lay our first keyframe for where it currently is at this position, which you can see our little diamond appears there to indicate our first keyframe. Now if we come up here to our time slider and hit plus five, that'll move our time slider on by five frames. That's quite a short duration because we want the flapping to appear quite fast. So then we're going to come across to our rotation options just here, and inside there we're going to hit 50. When we zoom back out, and then we move the time slider between those two keyframes, so the first one where it, that we put down and then the second one where we set the rotation to 50, we can see that the wing now moves between those two keyframes. So we're just going to move it on by another five frames by hitting plus five, and then we're going to put down another keyframe back at zero to move the wing back to its original position. And then we can move along again by another plus five and set it to 50 again. Now we can highlight all of these keyframes, hit Control or Command C to copy them, add another five frames and then paste those keyframes and then do the same thing again. Move it across to the end of the last keyframe, hit plus five and hit Command V or Control V to paste some more keyframes. And then if we wanted this to go on for quite a while, we could then highlight all of those keyframes, move it across, and it's just a way of duplicating the keyframes for this rotation. So we can drag that back to the beginning, hit the space bar, and see that we've now effectively created a flapping animation. If we wanted the animation to be a little bit smoother, highlight all these keyframes so they turn blue, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. And now if we hit the space bar, we'll see it just adds a little bit more sort of dynamism to the animation. Okay, so now that we've got the wing animating on the bird, it's time to do the main component, which is to animate this bird as if it's flying in an up and down oscillating motion across the screen. So we're just going to come up here to the toolbar and select the pen tool, which is G as a shortcut key on the keyboard, and lay down our first point. Then with our second point, we're going to click, but keeping it still depressed, we're going to then move the mouse, and you can see that it actually changes the shape of the line that we're producing. And so this can take a little bit of time to get used to initially, but if you just keep laying points down and then tweaking them to sort of reflect the shape of the line that you want to create, this will effectively be the line that we're going to animate the bird across. So don't worry, you can always go back in and edit the shape of the line once you've laid down the points. Just try and get it as sort of accurate as you can first off the bat. It will have been flying off the screen. Once you've finished drawing your line, if you wanted to alter any of the points, if you just hover over the points that you've just laid down, you see the black arrow appears, and that means you can select individual points. And with these individual points selected, you can then move and reposition them and grab these arms and change the angle of it if you wish. So once you've selected all of your points and you're reasonably happy with the path that you want your graphic to animate over, we can just hit V on the shortcut key and then deselect. So once you're happy with the path that you've created, and this will be the path that the bird's going to animate along, we're just going to come down to our composition pane and just where our wing layer is there, we're going to come across to this little swirly pick whip symbol just here, and we're going to click that and we're going to drag it and drop it on top of the bird. So this is important to do this step first, and basically it means that the wing will move with the bird whenever we move the bird around. So you can see you can move the bird around and the wing now moves with it. So to actually make the bird animate along this path, we're just going to come to the drop down arrow on the shape layer we've just created, come to contents, shape, path, and with this path option drop down, select the word path and hit command or control C to copy it. Then come down to our bird layer, hit P for our position shortcut keys, select the word position on our bird layer and hit command or control V. And this effectively applies the animation path to the object, in our case, the bird. So just looking at the keyframes, where the keyframes have been placed down here, I've accidentally left my time slider at the end of our rotation keyframes. So I'm just gonna drag this back to the beginning with all of our position keyframes selected. I'm just gonna drag that all the way back to the beginning to hold shift and make it snap. So now that our animation is actually gonna start at zero seconds, whereas before I'd had it starting at five seconds. So we can now delete this shape layer because we've copied and pasted the animation path from it that we need. So we'll just delete that. And if we hit spacebar with our time slider at zero, we can see our bird now animates along that path whilst the wing flaps up and down. So we can now highlight these position keyframes um, on the bird layer, right click and go keyframe assistant to make those easy ease keyframes too. And the beauty of this is if we think actually the animation is a little bit too quick at the moment, just by deselecting all the keyframes and grabbing this last keyframe, in the position options for the bird layer and just drag this across to the right, we see it stretches out the rest of these keyframes. So we can actually add more time for the whole of this animation simply by stretching the keyframes across to the right. So now if we hit spacebar, we'll see that the flight is a lot slower. Okay, so that's the basics of it. We can pretty much collapse that down now. And if we wanted to duplicate this and have multiple birds, for example, 
we could just highlight both the wing and the birds layers, hit Command C and Command V, and then hit Command C and Command V again. And if we now just open out all of the keyframes for those new copied layers by highlighting the layers and hitting U on the shortcut key, if we wanted to stagger the animations between the three birds that we now have, we can just highlight all those keyframes, drag them along to the right hand side, say, let's say after a second and a half, and then the next one's gonna appear and animate after a second after that and then hit the space bar, we'll see that we've now got duplicated birds and they animate along the same path, but at slightly different times. In the second example, just like before, we're gonna to come to wherever we saved our SVG file from the Noun project, open that up in Illustrator. And first of all, we're just gonna come over to our layers panel and split this out so that we can separate our three leaves here into their own individual layers so that we can animate them individually in After Effects. So we're just gonna create a new layer, leaves one, and then another layer, leaves two, and then drag our first leaf into leaves one and our second leaf into leaves two, and then just rename our third layer, leaves three. Again, we can highlight them all here so that we can change the color while we're still in Illustrator by clicking the swatches panel, coming over to our color picker, I'm just gonna select white, and then again, we're just gonna come up, file, save as, and save this as a new Illustrator layer, which I've already done here. Now again, we can come across to After Effects, create a new composition, again, 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 25 and a background color of black. I'm just gonna again create a new solid color, just like before, so that we can see what we're doing on a nice background color. And then come across to where we saved the file and drag our Leaves Illustrator file into After Effects making sure that we've selected footage and merge layers. Click OK, and then drag those leaves down into the composition pane. Just like before, we need to right click, come to create and convert this to a layer composition. And then we can double click on this layer composition that we've created and see all three leaves in there are independent layers. We can Command C or Control C, come back to our original composition and Command or Control V them in there and then delete our composition layer. Now we can see we've got all three of these leaves that we can animate independently. So I'm just gonna lock my underlying solid layer as, as before, and then click and drag to highlight all my leaves and pull them over to the left-hand side, and then deselect. So with everything deselected, we're then gonna come again up to our pen tool just here, shortcut key G, select that, zoom back out. I'm just gonna create my first path, and this is gonna be pretty rough. But we just effectively want the leaves to take a fairly torturous, swirly path across the screen, something that looks like maybe the wind caught it. So that's our first path, then hit V, make sure everything's deselected. So make sure that the shape layer is deselected Then come back up to the pen tool. And then we're gonna draw another line. And it should appear as a second layer. You'll see down in the composition pane down there. Same thing again, hit V on the shortcut key so that we can deselect, make sure the layer is deselected. And then we can just draw our third line here for our third path. hit V and deselect it. I'm sure you'll make a much neater job of it than me. And then all we have to do, just as before, for each one of the shape layers, which is represented an individual path, we just have to scroll down, scroll down the content, scroll down the shape, and scroll down the path, highlight the path, hit Command or Control C, and then come down to whichever leaf we want to be animated along that particular path, hit P for the shortcut key, select the word position, and then hit Command or Control V to paste it. Then with everything deselected, we can select our second shape layer and do the same thing. Scroll it down to expose the path, select the word path, command or control C, come down to our second leaf layer, hit the P for the shortcut key, select the word position, and then hit command V to paste it. And then again for our third path layer, scroll that down, scroll down content, shape, path, select the path, command C, leaf three, P for the shortcut key, select the word position, command V. Now we can delete these three shape layers because we've copied across the paths by selecting them all and hitting backspace. Now if we just animate this quickly, we can see already that we've got the leaves animating nearly off the screen. That's quite quick. So if we wanted to extend the animation from two seconds, you can see here that the, currently the animation is set to up to two seconds. We can just highlight these end keyframes for all three position layers and just drag them along and stretch the amount of time it takes for the leaves to get off the screen. Let's do about four and a half seconds. Zoom back out, hit the space bar and you see that they go a lot slower now across the screen. 
And of course, we can readjust this at any point by just shrinking that back down. So say, let's go for three and a half seconds. And we can highlight all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. So now if we hit spacebar, we see that they move across the screen with a bit more motion. That's quite nice timing. We'll notice that one of our leaves doesn't actually quite make it off the end of the screen. So if we just click and find out which leaf that is, which will be leaf two, if we wanted to make sure that for this final keyframe here, the leaf was in, was in fact actually off the screen, we can select it and just drag it off the screen so you can actually edit the path after it's already been added. So now if we spacebar, we'll see that all three leaves animate across the screen and disappear. So if we actually wanted our leaves to be rotating at the same time as they're flying through the air in our animation, a bit more realism, we can do so by just highlighting all three layers, hitting the R shortcut key to open up the rotation options, and just on our first rotation stopwatch here, if I just zoom in, if you hold the Alt key and press the stopwatch, it opens up this expression window here. Inside this expression window, if we just write the word time and then star symbol to indicate times and then 100, you can put whatever number you want in here. And then we'll do the same for the next one. So hover over the rotation stopwatch, hold Alt and click the stopwatch. It opens up the expression window, hit time and we'll do 250. The number that you enter here dictates the speed of rotation. And then again, for our third leaf layer, we'll hit the stopwatch whilst holding Alt. And again, we'll put in time here. And maybe for this one, we'll change it to 150. And so adding this expression here effectively adds perpetual rotation to each of these individual objects. So if we now come back to the beginning and hit the space bar, we'll notice that all of the leaves rotate, but they rotate at different times dictated by the number that we've entered in the expression with higher numbers indicating faster rotation as they move across the screen. So just collapse those three layers down. Now the last little thing, if we just wanted to add a little bit more realism to our composition as it's animating across, if we wanted to add some lines maybe to maybe sort of represent the wind, we, again, we can come back up to our pen tool and shortcut key G on the keyboard, select that, make sure none of these other layers are selected. We're just gonna lay two clicks and put a slight bend in it. We're gonna hit V on the shortcut key, deselect, then come back up to the pen tool, click again, and I'm gonna lay another little one in there. Same thing again, V on the shortcut key, deselect, make sure everything's deselected, come to the pen tool, and then we're just gonna draw a third line in there, hit V and deselect. And now if we want to animate these lines, so it looks like the wind is also moving across the animation, we can select these three shape layers, toggle them down, and see where this little button says add here. If we select the add button, and we're looking for this option that says trim paths. So we're just going to add a trim paths. And if we scroll down the trim paths option, we'll have these two stopwatches just here, the end and the start one. So if you just watch the line here as I move the end stopwatch, we'll see that the line appears and disappears. So we can lay keyframes down with this start and end stopwatch in order to animate the wind. We probably want these to maybe start at zero. So you can also select that and enter zero, and then click the stopwatch for our first keyframe. And then if we move the leaves along, Maybe we want the wind to start as the leaves are passing. So then with the time slider set to where we want it to beginning, we'll put another keyframe down just so that it starts at zero there. And then maybe we'll animate it along a half a second or so. Scrub that all the way up to 100% to lay down this next keyframe. And then in order for it to come back the opposite direction, so currently it's going from left to right and we want it to disappear from left to right, we're gonna lay down the first start stopwatch and then over the next sort of half second or so, we can scrub this up to 100 to make it go in the other direction. So you can see it appears from the left and then disappears from the left. Again, we can highlight these keyframes, right click and easy ease, just zoom back out, scrub back to the beginning, deselect and press the space bar. And we'll see that the wind sort of appears as they rush past. So if we want to apply this animation of the wind lines to the other two lines that we've created, we can easily do so. We just come to the trim path section, make sure our time slide is back right to the beginning, select our trim paths for which we've already set the keyframes and just hit command C to copy it, select the next wind layer, hit command V to paste and hit the next wind layer, command V to paste. And now if we come back to the beginning, deselect and play our animation, we'll see the leaves will animate across as the wind disappears at the same time. So that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, um, found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other tutorials for hints and tips.